Thanks for your company here on Lunchtime Agenda. Joining me right now here in the Canberra studio is the leader of the Palmer United Party, Clive Palmer. Thanks very much for your time. Well, it's good to be here. The Prime Minister says uh, as part of his new mm. way of government, he won't be picking meaningless fights with the Senate when it comes to policy. Mm. Are you encouraged by that approach? Well, nobody wants a fight. We want the best outcome for the Australian people, so that's good. Uh, certainly the government's wasted a lot of time on a lot of things that clearly didn't have the support of the community and that would have been better spent aiming at the economic policy. Things like the GP co-payment, mm. for example, have you shifted your position at all on that? No. <laughs> so still no GP co-payment? There'll be no G GP co-payment. There'll be no higher education reforms. We don't think these things are actually reforms. We think it's uh, retrogressive to make people pay double for what they do for university education. So, Okay, we'll just stick with the GP co-payment or yeah. get to higher education. Um, so no form of co-payment will be acceptable to the Palmer United Party That's right, going yeah, forward. Okay, yeah. so that hasn't changed. Higher education, mm -hmm. uh, will you accept any form of, of privatisation, any form of universities being able to set their own fees? No. Okay, that's a pretty straight up and down answer. Uh, have you noticed any difference to the approach that the government has taken to you mm. or your senators when it comes to pushing through some of these reforms or anything else? Yeah, we have. We've, we've found they've been more consultative and they've been more interested about alternatives and ideas. I think that's a good thing from the government. Tony Abbott said he would listen and I wanted to call on the Prime Minister to have a national economic summit to involve the whole community to see what our what, what ideas we can get for the benefit of the country, for Cabinet to form a program and to go forward to reform the nation. It's not just listening to the party that's important, we need to listen to the community. You know, the country's got a lot of very clever people that can contribute to our policy formation and at the moment it's just all tied up in the Labor Party or the Liberal Party needs to be let set free. So you want to put the ideas to the people yeah. and who, who exactly would, would be part of this? Well if you have a look at the traditional Australian community you've got business leaders, you've got, the, you've got unions, right? you've got industry bodies that have all got various ideas and you've got entrepreneurs, individual people that have made billions of dollars like myself in the past that have contributed uh, a lot of money to our exports and uh, they've all got something to consider. The government's been getting advice just from Treasury. Now Treasury's got a vested interest in keeping their jobs. They all get they all come from one or two universities. They all think the same, look the same, do the same. Not many of them have been in industry or made any money. Yet they're, they're the drivers of our economic policy. And of course it's 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 in chaos and we've got austerity. If we go to the United States, they've had quantitative easing, their their economy's booming. We go to the Europe, they've now adopted a, a growth strategy. Yet Australia has been caught in austerity, the same as Greece. We don't want to go the way of Greece. It didn't work so well for Julia Gillard when she put climate policy policy to, to the people or, or, or attempted to do that? Mm. Well, you've got to be prepared to make decisions and choices. Uh, what I'm about is expanding the choices for the government, expanding the options, so that we don't just have to cut, cut, cut uh, without any sort of feeling for the people out there. Um, when it comes to uh, getting uh, you know, reform, when it comes to the economy, uh, another policy, a levy on big business to pay for family, the yeah. families package, is that something that you have had a look at, you would be happy to support? Where are well, you at on that? Well, everything's a levy or a tax. You know, the Liberal Party is supposed to be the low taxing party. If you're generating more wealth and you're creating more turnover, you're paying more tax anyway. You don't need increased levies. Um, the sign of a politician or a government having to put more taxes means they're failing to come to, together with what their predecessors have been able to do. So we you don't, don't support that? No, I don't support any more taxation. Uh, this, this was something that the government did take to the election, although in a different form. It was meant yeah. to pay for the paid parental leave scheme. Yeah. Uh, does that mean they have a mandate for it? No, it doesn't because the paid parental leave scheme, I don't think really, is is a good policy. The Prime Minister's acknowledged that and so is the opposition. Um, we need to generate more wealth in this country. That's the key problem. This, all these policies are very small amounts of money compared to our 1.5 trillion economy. We've got to get that economy buzzing. Small businesses are hurting, uh, people are losing their jobs and there's massive job losses coming up in the next six months. The small business would get the tax cut though, 1.5%. One, one it's just the 3,000 well, biggest companies that wouldn't. Why shouldn't they contribute? To well, if you're not earning any money, a 1.5% tax cut's irrelevant. What's happening is that the revenue is dying out, the taxation base is going because people aren't making a profit. You only pay tax if you make a profit. And that goes back to the demand level in the economy. Demand is shrinking in Australia at the moment. If you keep it shrinking, no one will pay tax and, and, and we'll get into a real problem. The biggest companies are making profits though, aren't they? They're can't pay, say, say that they're, they're, they're not they're paying profit. their tax overseas. Yeah. Yeah. They're not paying it here, yeah. right? So shouldn't then an, an additional levy 
help well, with no, that? Well, the, the levy will will go on small businesses and, and will drive them to the wall. Oh, no, no, the no it won't, it won't go on small businesses. Sorry. It'll only go on the big bis business. Well, look, you know, business. it's not big versus small. It's government versus prosperity and efficiency. We've got to draw a line in the sand and say, what is it that we have to do to make our economy go further? I'm doing OK. Other people in the economy are doing OK. There are people that, that uh, have a bit of economic wisdom. It shouldn't be confined to public servants that have been in Treasury all their life, yeah. or it shouldn't be confined to the limited number of people who are in Parliament. We need to expend our net further than that. OK. The bottom line, though, on that, on the 1.5% uh, levy for the 3,000 biggest companies, will you and your senators uh, attempt to stop the government from imposing such a levy? Yeah, we don't think we should have discriminatory levies. You know, when you have discriminatory taxes, if you're, what you're saying so, is... So you'll vote against it or disallow if, it or if you make, you If you make more profit you get a higher rate of tax. We want to encourage people to make profit. It's like payroll tax, you know. You tax people to employ people and you wonder why they're not employing more people. We need to create incentive in our society so that if people do well, they can, they've can they got the opportunity of doing better employing more people. You need money to go around so you've got a higher level of demand. I just want to be absolutely clear that I'm, yeah. I know what you're saying. Uh, have you not made a decision on that? Uh, are, you, are you certain that you would vote against that? You would try to disallow it or, or do whatever you could well, to stop the government imposing such a law? Well, we'll see what the government comes up with uh, post Tony Abbott's uh, a trip to Damascus. You know, he's now, he's now uh, seen the light. He now realises he needs to consult with the community, he needs to listen. Let's see what the proposals are. One of the key reasons the government points to when explaining why it's uh, struggling so much is obstruction in the Senate. Mm. Uh, do you or your senators take any responsibility for well, that? Well, of course, that's just not true. If you look at the Senate up to June last year, the government didn't get one bill passed. We came into the Senate, and of course, they've had the opportunity. The carbon tax has been repealed. Uh, we also guarantee 10% reduction of electricity prices throughout Australia. The uh, mining tax has been repealed. We've saved the... Uh, the uh, uh, kids, school kids bonus, low income super, all that's been achieved. The refugee caseload of 30,000 people has been fixed up. Five billion dollars has been saved there for the government every year. All these things have happened. Um, and, you know, but the government doesn't recognise them as achievements. They focus too much on the budget rather than saying that these are the things that have been achieved. Everyone whinges about the budget. Well, actual fact, 95% of the budget was passed in the first week. What we're arguing over now, you know, 1.5 trillion economy is pretty irrelevant. It's just a, an ideological debate where people want to get their way. And it's not about their way, it's about not hurting people. You don't need to. Mm -hmm. What's your view on what happened in the Liberal Party yesterday? Well, I think um, it was a wake-up for the Prime Minister because, you know, we had the election in Queensland where Campbell Newman, of course, was very arrogant and he said that there was no problems. Um, you know, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. Now, we hope that Tony Abbott will correct his errors so they don't become mistakes. We've seen what happens in Queensland when they became mistakes, that they're beyond, beyond retribution. So Tony Abbott's got a chance now to re-establish uh, trust with the Australian community and to do something uh, which will be good for the country. He doesn't want to squander that chance or there won't be any more chances for him. What were the errors that you identified? Well, first of all, we thought it was politically non-supportable, the uh, co-payment. Mm. And we thought the education, so-called reforms weren't reforms, didn't have the support of the community. And we thought there wasn't an emphasis on how we make this economy go, how we re-establish confidence and how we create more wealth. So we didn't have an expansionist uh, stimulative growth policy, we had a retractive policy. When, when things get smaller and retract, demand gets smaller and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy you spiral down much like Greece has. Now also if we want to have a the focus was on balancing your budget or not. And of course, Uzbekistan's got a balanced budget, so has Ghana. So are we following the Uzbekistani or the Ghanaese model, or are we following the United States that's had a balanced budget uh, only 12 years in the last 50 years? Uh, have you got a balanced budget? You, have you got a credit card debt? Do you pay a home loan? Is that Could you run your life without any sort of level of debt? Of course not. In actual fact, Australia is one of the lowest debt countries in the OECD, number three in the OECD. We've got 12% of our GDP as debt. When Bob Menzies was Prime Minister, it was 40%. So let's get realistic. Let's get that other 30% working for Australians. You've been fairly vocal about the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff in the past. Mm. What do you make of the push for her to be sacked from within the Liberal Party at the moment? Well, I think it's a very bad thing to, to try to say your, your, uh, your mistakes are all on the, on the basis of a staffer. 
that's a really cowardice way to go about it. I don't think she should be sacked. She should be protected and supported. Whatever she does, whether you agree with it or not, she's only doing it because of the person she's worked for has asked her to do it. And so it's very cowardly to attack Chiefs of Staff. I've got into trouble with uh, the Prime Minister Chief of Staff because I used her as an example uh, of her income. I didn't attack her personally. I think it's wrong to say that my mistakes are... I, I'm sure that the Prime Minister wouldn't say that about her. Mm. Um, the Queensland election, just briefly, you did mention Campbell Newman. Yeah. Um, he has now um, uh, formally uh, resigned. Yeah, um, that's good. And there has been some suggestion that he may be parachuted into the seat of <laughs> Indi. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of that? And would you consider assisting any candidate uh, well, to absolutely. run against him? Absolutely. We'd be, we'll be supporting very strongly Cathy McGowan in that contest. If Financially? Anyway, we can. You know, we'd do everything we could. But she's a great member. And Campbell Newman's kidding himself if he thinks the people of Australia will ever elect him to any elected office again. He said as much on election night. He said, my, my political career is over. I'd encourage him to take his own advice and go home. So, so you, would, you would bankroll uh, Kath McGowan? Absolutely. Campaign. She'd have an unlimited <laughs> amounts of money. It would ooze out of it because she's a good member. Uh, and she'd support him. But with the added incentive of Campbell Newman in the race, I'd, I'd love to be down there. But this fellow won't stand again. He knows that the people don't like him. He's an arrogant guy. He doesn't care about people. He doesn't want to serve the community. He just had his snout in the trough all the time. I'm still suing Campbell Newman in the Queensland Supreme Court and people will find out what he's all about. I don't think he'll be able to stand after that. Clive Palmer, I know you've got to get to question time. Thanks for being so generous with your time. It's this great afternoon. to be here. All the best. Good to see you. Thanks.